In this video, we're going to go over the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, and it's often um, it's often not talked about that much because everyone knows what the fundamental theorem of calculus, and a lot of people know what the fundamental theorem of linear algebra or algebra, but a lot of people ignore the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. But it's really important because it's a building block of all those other fundamental theorems in the end. So we'll just state how it is first. So just reading it for each integer n is greater than one, there exists primes. Uh, p1 less than p2 less than p3 all the way less than pr which is the biggest prime we need p sub r such that n equals the product of all those primes and furthermore each of these factorizations so each list of products is unique there is no other number that shares that list and what I've done down here is just written out some of the starting cases so 2 is good uh, meets its conditions because it can be written as a product of primes itself 3 same idea 4 can be written as product of two primes, two times two, right? So we're going to use induction first to show that for every integer n greater than one, this is true. So here's our base case, true for n equals two. We know, we're good. <clears throat> we're going to use induction to try and show that if, um, if the fundamental theorem of arithmetic holds for all um, integers that are less than m, then less than or equal to m, let's say, then it's true for the next integer up, which is m plus 1. So let's put some, let's uh, remind ourselves of our base cases. So 2, 3, 4. 2 equals 2, check. 2, 3 equals 3, check. 4 equals 2 times 2. Check, check, check. So it's true for all those. So in our case, let's let our m be equal to 4. So it is true for all integers less than or equal to 4, right? 2, 3, and 4. We're not using 1 because we stated we're not going to use 1. Um, so is it true for 5 or m plus 1 in general? So let's try to prove that just in general, if it's true for all integers less than or equal to m, then it's true for m plus 1. So now m plus 1 has one of two options. Either it's prime or it's not prime. If it's prime, that's great, because then we can just write it as itself, which is a product of primes. If it's not prime, that means there are at least two numbers, a and b, which multiply to make m plus 1, and furthermore, which meet these conditions, have to be greater than 1, right, because we don't have, we want it to be um, numbers that aren't 1, because we could have just done 1 and m plus 1, and less than m plus 1. <clears throat> so they're true factors, factors that are actually smaller than the number itself. So they meet these conditions, and <clears throat> we know that since it's smaller than m plus 1, so m is the biggest it could be basically, that means that it satisfies the conditions of the FTA, Fundamental Theorem of Arithmetic. So that means that a equals p1, p2, dot, 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 all the way to some p sub s, and b equals p1 prime, p2 prime, all the way to some ps prime, which means that they have their own prime factorizations. And if we just multiply these two together, then we get p1, p1 prime, p2, p2 prime, all the way to p sub s, p sub s prime, and that equals m plus 1. And that in itself is a prime factorization because these are all primes. So we've successfully shown that if it's true for um, all integers that are less than or equal to m, that it's true for the next integer up, which is enough to show that for all, by induction, all integers, this is true, except one, of course. And now we're going to try to prove the next part of the theorem, which is that this factorization is unique. And again, we're going to go into, we're going to try to use induction. Let's use a blue color for this one. So we're going to prove uniqueness. Uniqueness is actually really important in mathematics. I might do a video on uniqueness at some point. Um, so we're going to try to prove, we're going to say that m plus 1, we're going to go ahead and say that it equals p1, p2, all the way to p sub u. Let's make that look more like a u. Um, and there's also another prime factorization, so we're going to do, we're going to assume that there's another prime factorization, which is p1 prime, p2 prime, let's say all the way to p sub v. Okay.
Okay, so we've assumed that there are two prime factorizations, and our goal is to prove that these two are the same, which means that there's only one prime factorization. Okay, so how are we going to do this? So let's focus on, let's put our focus on this term right here, P1. Okay, so P1 uh, has to be able to divide M plus 1. That means that Remember, m plus 1 over p1 gives us the rest, p2, dot, 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 p, all the way to pu. So it divides m plus 1. But it also must be able to divide the other prime factorization, which means that it has to be able to divide one of the factors of the prime factorization. But you're seeing where the problems are arising. Because since these are all prime, how likely are there to have a factor? They can only have a factor if these two are the same. And let's go through a rigorous argument about this. So let's say that we know that P1 equals some P sub J, uh, where J is one of these numbers over here, um, or equals some P sub J. And that is greater than or equal to P sub I prime, right? Because these are an ascending numerical order. And we also know by reverse argument, let's say we use P1 prime instead of P1, and we did the reverse argument, we know that P1 prime equals some PI, where I is something from this list, and those are greater than or equal to P1. So notice what we've done here. We've shown that P1 is greater than or equal to P1 prime, and P1 prime is greater than or equal to P1, which is enough to show that P1 equals P1 prime. And we can repeat this argument for the other ones because now P2 becomes the smallest, P2 prime becomes the smallest. And we can show that P1 equals P1 prime. We can show that P2 equals P2 prime. We can go all the way down and we can show that P sub U equals P sub V. And that means that these two prime factorizations that we thought were different in the beginning are not different at all. They're actually the same prime factorization which shows that <clears throat> this is unique, which means that for each number, there's only one prime factorization. And a quick side note, what we also could have done is used induction here. We could have said that um, <clears throat> we have we show that if uh, unique for all integers that are less than, uh, you know, m, less than or equal to m, then unique for m plus 1. And we could have done that by doing, uh, if we did just the first step right here, p1 equals p1 prime, then we're left with m plus 1 over uh, p1 equals p2 all the way to p sub u. And that also equals, um, remember p1 prime was the same as p1. So p2 prime all the way to p sub v. And m plus 1 over p1 is a number that is less than or equal to m because we've divided something <coughs> out of it that's not 1. Remember, none of these factors can be 1. Um, so that means that the remaining number, this is the same number, is less than or equal to m. And we know that's unique, so there's no real need to go through these whole steps.